Hiya. Yeah. I am back. Let's do another video. And I'm excited about this video. I'm excited on some level to do all my videos because I, I love the idea that I can introduce people to music they maybe have never heard. But this is a band that exists in a universe that I haven't really talked about yet on this channel. And I want to start doing that because I do love this type of music. And when I say this type of music, I'm referring to punk, whatever the hell that means. It can mean many things to you. I definitely have a certain meaning that I attribute to it. But this is one of the greatest groups, one of my favorite groups, and one of the greatest albums I've ever heard. I'm just going to get right into it. The Stranglers. Yes. Radis Norvegic. Or wait, four first. Four. Radis Norvegicus. Pretty sure that's how you say that. It's taxonomy, and I'll get to that. Radis Norvigicus 4. This is a brilliant album. If you have never heard this album, you now have more homework to do. Glorious, beautiful, perfect album. This is also their first album. I was earlier this morning, I was looking up their catalog on Discogs, and I noticed they have No More Heroes as their first album on Discogs. No, this is their first album. It is not No More Heroes. That is not their first album. Number one, most importantly, never listen to Discogs, okay? I used to work there. I can give you some inside information. Discogs doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. I can 100% confirm that. They have no clue. Discogs is filled with people who don't even like music. They're business people. That's a whole different story. There have been a few of you that want me to go into my Discogs experience. Maybe I will. I'm just not interested in opening that door because I don't really feel like closing it at the end. But trust me when I say that Discogs don't believe... It's like Wikipedia. Don't believe what you read. This is their first album. And oh my goodness, it is a glorious piece of work. There's really not a bad song on here. This is a beautiful piece of work by a great band. And I'm going to talk about why I think that. Now, this is their debut album. They had been around for a number, number of years. This came out in 1977. 46 years old. Crazy that this album's been out that long but almost 50 years old and hasn't aged today, in my opinion. They had been around for several years. I want to say they, they, they formed in 1974, 1975. So they formed prior to the whole punk explosion. They existed. And that's part of why I think this group's a little more interesting than the average punk band. I generally think, to me, there is the... When I think of punk, whatever punk means, you can attribute whatever you want to to that word. That's just another sloppy, trivial genre tag, in my opinion. But it does carry weight in some instances, and I will use the word today because I think it is appropriate in some respects. But to me, there's a holy trinity of punk bands. Sex Pistols, Clash, and The Stranglers. Why I, why I say that is because, to me, punk is about non-expectations. It is about doing it your way. It is about not following the herd. Punk was a word created by the media to try to find meaning in a certain type of music that maybe they didn't necessarily understand. It is a media-derived term. Just like all genres are, people need to understand things. And so they give you a lot of surface level critique. I mean, YouTube is living proof of that, glaring proof of that. We have music reviews all over YouTube where people just want to give you very blanket surface level meanings of records and then move on to the next thing. Stranglers, to me, are the ultimate punk band because they weren't punk. <laughs> They're really, when you look at it in a, under a microscope, these guys weren't really punk at all. They got caught up in the whole punk thing because they existed in that time. But when you listen to the music, it's got that energy. It's angry. 
it's aggressive so it got labeled as punk but if you ask me these guys really aren't that punk and that's what makes them punk am i making any sense i mean when i think of the clash a lot of the shit they did wasn't traditional punk go listen to sandinista man can you listen to sandinista and say that's a true punk record i mean i can because of all the things it's not sandinista has every type of music you can think of on that album it's a big sprawling album with all kinds of different influences that's not something you necessarily think when you think of punk you think of that driving force the fast beats the screaming into the microphone that's not what sandinista is but we all think of the clash as punk right combat rock i don't think that's a punk album same here to me that's what makes a band super punk is that they don't give a shit whether they're punk or not they let the media and the fans and the public come up with those kinds of arguments but meanwhile they just put out their music and that's what this album is the stranglers in general are one of the greatest punk bands of all time because they didn't care if they were punk or not they just got on with what they did and they were slightly older than the average punk band i mean punk ba punk bands in the 70s and the late 70s were in their late teens early 20s these guys were pushing 30 already they'd been around a while so i think the press had a hard time pinning these guys down they also had a very unique sound they had organs and that by the way that unfairly gets them pigeonholed into this corner with the doors i would never think of these guys sounding like the doors but i read a review sometime some time ago back in the 90s where people or at least one reviewer was referring to these guys as sounding like the doors i'm like the doors what but they had an organ player you know they had organs so but this was a band these guys all wrote songs they all contributed and they were such a good man. Burnell, the bass player. Hugh Cornwell. I mean, come on. Hugh Cornwell has one of the most distinctive voices and lyrical styles of anybody in history. What a voice on this guy. Really funny. Really droll. Fantastic delivery. And never more so than on this record. Brian Duffy, the drummer. Could you have a more perfect drummer? I mean, talk about a guy who hit all the notes every single fucking time. This is a great band. And to dis I want to dispel any talk that these guys are just a punk band. No, they're a hell of a lot more than that. And they deserve your attention if you haven't heard them. You, sh you should start here. Start at the beginning. They've had a lot of lineup changes. Cornwell left in 1990 with the album 10 he left that was a bummer i think they didn't sound the same but their song their albums a couple of their post cornwell albums are really good so start here though if you're going to get into the stranglers and i highly recommend that you do start here radis norvigicus now this album's interesting because it has four down here I'm going to talk about the artwork a little bit. And by the way, this is the United States promo version. There's a sticker here on the bottom. You can read it. And I'll read it too. Warning, this album has not been edited for family listening. The tune Ugly contains explicit language. Beware. Yeah, you know. I mean, all of the songs are kind of explicit. I mean, Peaches, so you've heard, if you've heard Peaches, that's their big hit. I think it got re renewed interest when the when the brilliant movie Sexy Beast came out. Have you ever seen Sexy Sexy Beast by the way? Holy shit. <laughs> One of the great movies of our times. Brilliant movie. Sexy Beast, man. Go watch this movie immediately if you have never seen it. But Peaches is in the opening credits of that movie. I think a lot of people discovered the Stranglers there too. Which is good. More people should. But this is their best album, and it's called Four here on the cover. It's my opinion, all right? The Stranglers have many brilliant albums. This happens to be my favorite. But then it says Radis Norvigicus on the back. Now, 
I love I love the title and the the titling and the wordplay they're doing here because number one, four. This is their first album. So right away you're like, four. Okay, I guess that's their first album or their fourth album. But no, it's the first album. So right away you're kind of confused. And then on the back, Radis Norvigicus is basically the taxonomic name for the brown rat. Simple taxonomy here. So you've got the confusion of this, implying that this is their fourth album. Well, you know it's their first album, but then you have the unar inarguable taxonomy of this title. So it's like confusion and fact. I love that kind of wordplay that bands do. I think it's interesting. Before you even listen to the music, you're like, is, is this their fourth album? I thought it was their first album. And then you flip it over and it's like, oh, yeah, right. The Brown Rat. Okay. Well, that's factual, but this isn't factual. So right away, you're kind of in this imbalance. <laughs> the Stranglers are kind of fucking with you. And I love that. Like their, like their entire approach to music. They don't really give a shit if you're understanding it or not. Are we punk? Well, okay, that's what the media calls us, but we don't think we're punk. And I don't think they ever thought of themselves as punk. If you listen to their music... One of the most exciting things about the Stranglers is that they never did the same thing twice. If you listen to their catalog, every record they did sounded different. Their their first couple of albums definitely sounded similar, but then when they got into the mid-80s, they definitely changed their sound up. And even still, their albums never quite sounded the same. I mean, their two biggest tracks are Peaches and Golden Brown. Listen to those two songs and tell me if you didn't know it was The Stranglers, you would think it was the same band. It doesn't sound like the same band. That's why these guys are punk to me. It's because they didn't give a shit. They truly didn't care how they came across. I think they got caught up in that whole punk thing, but they never thought of, about them, thought of themselves as that. They were already doing their thing when punk happened. And they got lumped into that. A very fascinating group. It's, it's lots of interesting little bits and pieces in terms of not just their music, but the society that they were caught up in. Because really, they just got on with business. Every record they put out was fantastic. Never more so than this. Let's look at the track listing. Sometimes there's not a bad song on here. There are nine total cuts on here. My favorites, London Lady, Hanging Around, Peaches. Get a grip on yourself. Peaches and get a grip on yourself. Those two tracks to start side two, arguably their best songs they ever did. The energy on this album is unparalleled. Ugly, down in the sewer. Seriously, y'all, listen to this record if you've never heard it. You're going to love it. I can't imagine many people who like anything that even touches the realm of rock and roll music. I can't imagine that you wouldn't like this. This is just beautiful music. Honest. Genuine. When people ask me the type of music I like, I generally, generally just say, I like honest music. I like genuine music. That's it. Doesn't get any more honest than this. Let's look at the inner sleeve. Again, this is the American issue. Got a little promo hole. This is a promo copy. The dudes getting ready to rock. And I will show you the label. This is the promo copy, so you get little you get some unique white label action going on here. And this is a nice pressing, just like all records in the 70s. This is not 180 gram. You could you hear that wobble? That means it's super thin, probably recycled plastic. And you know what? It sounds excellent. People knew how to press records back then. They didn't fuck around like they do now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Just because something's on 180 gram doesn't automatically make it good. It still needs to be pressed right. You could have a record that is 80 grams and it could be a much better press than 180 grams. It is what it is. You, 
you just got to do it right. It's about quality control, and that's something that lacks in our current record press society. Amazing record. Rattus Norvega Kiss, the brown rat. I'm going to do more Stranglers videos, I think, because I love these guys. <laughs> The energy that these guys have and the shifts and the evolution that they have is so good. What are your favorite albums from the Stranglers? This would be my favorite. I, I love, boy, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of my favorite. I mean, The Raven. The Raven's amazing. Love that song. Duchess is on The Raven. I think Duchess is one of, it's one of their most popular songs. Duchess, is, every time I hear Duchess, I lose all control of everything. I, I have to crank it. My mind gets into this extreme happy place. One of the greatest songs, one of the greatest pop songs of all time. Uh, Black and White. Uh, no More Heroes. Those are their early albums. And then they, they, they get into, in, in the 80s, they get into albums like La Follet, which has Golden Brown. And an album that sounds completely different than anything else they ever did. The, the Gospel According to the Mine Black, Mine in Black, which is completely, completely different than anything they did. Stranglers are a group you've got you've to lace up your boots and get ready for. Because they're going to surprise you each and every time. But it started here. One of the greatest punk bands of all time. And I've explained why. I hope I've explained why. To me, they are one of the greatest punk bands because they're really not punk at all. They just got on with business. They didn't care. They gave, they gave no shits, no fucks, zero fucks about what people thought of their sound. They just did it and put it out there. And if they got caught up in the whole punk scene, then that was fine with them. Great artwork, confusing titles. You don't know which way is left and which way is right. And that's always the indication of a great album. You know there's a very unique sound on the way. Check this album out if you haven't done it. And if you've heard it before, go listen to it again. You can never listen to it enough. Until next time.